So this is um, these are these are our portable oxygen cylinders, what we call the E tanks. Um, so a lot of people call in for oxygen tanks, and they ask for portable oxygen tanks. We carry the C cylinder, which is only um, a little over a foot high, and then there's the E tank, the E cylinder that's almost at about waist height. So just portable, just the term portable oxygen tank doesn't necessarily mean E tank or C tank. So I just want to verify with that. Um, we have two different kinds of E cylinders as well. We have the kind that have a, a kind of a built-on key or lever on it, um, and then there's some that look like there's something that's missing. It almost looks like that lever's missing or it's broken off, um, but it's not. There's just really two different kinds. This one has a, a lever that you can always always use. It's always attached to it. Then there's the the tank that has the actually a, a separate key that you use. It has a little, couple oval holes on it. You want to show where they're, where they're at there. Why do we have there. two different ones? Just that there's an older style and a newer style. Okay. That's basically um, all it is. Um, on these tanks, a full tank will come with a little red tab on it. Um, when they're when you're being ready to be used, you actually take that red tab off. There's kind of a little red circle tab about the size of a Cheerio. Um, and you can actually leave that one on or take it off, but I always recommend taking it off. I found that it's actually become more of a um, more of a nuisance than it is helpful. Um, so it can actually, because it's a little plastic piece, if it's at all made wrong or there's a a little bend in it or a crack in it, it's actually going to break the seal rather than help create a seal between it and the regulator. This is your oxygen cylinder regulator. Um, it has a, it does have a dial on there. Uh, they go through from one to three thousand psi. Uh, Two thousand psi is a full tank. A lot of, one uh, common misunderstanding is that if it's at two thousand psi, it's only half empty. Um, so we'll get calls that there's a half empty tank being delivered out. But know that it's, it just shows an extra excessive amount of pressure between that two thousand and three thousand psi. So 2,000 is full. Um, there's a little red zone on pretty much all the regulators that shows you when to when it's time to change your tanks. And you want to you can calculate how long your tanks are going to last by um, online. There's there's different diagrams or information that will tell you how long that tank's going to last on your leader flow. Um, depending on your leader flow, the higher your leader flow is, the less that tank's going to last. There's also applications on smartphones that you can calculate how long your tank's going to last. So, to put this regulator on, uh, first you look at your oxygen tank. There's three holes on one side, two small holes on the bottom, one bigger one on the top. And that's going to line up with these two prongs on your regulator here. And then the bigger hole's going to line up with a gasket that's in the middle inside. So really you're just lining up, matching the dots. And then on the back side, there's a little screw that goes in the bottom that you don't have to worry about, but there's a little notch taken out. So that if it's anywhere close to being level, this bolt's going to line up with that little notch taken out of the back and going to seal for you. So you just line up the dots, two prongs are in the bottom, slide it over the top, get the bolt out, of course. And I just kind of move it up and down, and if you're looking from the top of the tank, when you're moving it up and down, you're going to eventually find that hole if you're on the right side. You'll actually feel and see that go into place. And then you can start to, to tighten the bolt on the back of the regulator. Go till it stops and then just kind of make sure it's snug. You don't have to bring out your wrenches and start cranking it on there. Um, once, it's, once it's on there, if your regulator is set to zero and these numbers usually 1 through 8 or 1 through 15 are all in liters per minute like your oxygen concentrator. If it's set at 0 um, and before you've turned your tank on it's still going to show that dial still at 0. Not meaning that your tank is, is empty, it's just you haven't opened up your tank to actually see how full it is. So what you do is you turn the lever that's made that's, that's already connected onto your tank or with your key. Um, and all you need to do is a quarter of a turn. That's all you need. You're going to hear a little bit of a pop You'll see that dial go up to about 2,000 psi, or however full it is, how full that tank is. So we'll turn that here. 
So we didn't really hear anything, um, but you know that it's on because that dial's come up. And then from there, you can adjust your leader flow to the to your prescribed leader per minute. So these numbers, if you're at two liters per minute, you just turn it to two. Um, they'll go up to one through eight, or one through ten, or one through fifteen. Um, from that point, you'll actually you can if you just un, if you try and take off this regulator just by taking it off the back, you haven't closed your tank, and it's gonna make a lot of loud noise, <laughs> and it's gonna scare you. So don't be um, don't be alarmed by it. Really, just try and stay calm and just turn the tank off. It's not gonna hurt you um, if it's just if when taking it out, it just kind of lets out a little bit of oxygen. No. So just stay calm and turn it off. I know I was. If you do take, if you do, when you do want to take, turn the tank off and take your regulator off to take it to another tank. First, turn this, just that quarter of a turn that you turned it. Um, clockwise is off. Counterclockwise is on. So we'll turn it off. Well, actually, there's actually oxygen still in this, in this regulator. There's pressure build up. So if you turn it off, it's gonna just kind of give you a burst of oxygen. Um, which won't hurt you, but it's, it's best to, to bleed it out first. So you turn the tank off, you open up in the leader flow, that'll go down to zero, and you can safely just take it off. One thing I didn't show you is where the, your cannula or tubing goes, and that connects right onto the bottom. A lot of folks just use that seven foot cannula that can be regulated to yourself. Um, then you have a cart here, you can carry it in. Um, you can't actually use these on public transportation. It has to actually be attached to something like the e-tank bag on your wheelchair. Something a lot of people don't know. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, when you do turn on your regulator, uh, and you do hear it, you're set at zero, and it's it's kind of hissing at you a little bit. Um, you want to kind of see where that noise is coming from, um, so you can figure out if it's just a leak. There is this gasket here; it does tend to wear out. So your gasket, this is kind of one I brought up. It's kind of a little bit worn out. Um, you can kind of look at that before you put the tank on as well. Um, so it's worn out. It's going to hiss. It's not going to have a good seal on it. It's going to let out a lot of the oxygen that you're not actually going to end up being used. It's not going to be used. Um, and we have we have more of those in the back. We can replace them. We can show you where they're at. can also get stuck to your tank when you take your regulator off the tank you go to put on a new one um, and all of a sudden you have a lot of noise and, and then we have some patients that are just fanatic and have to change it every time they and then um, that was about it all of this, uh, smoking safety precautions um, open flame precautions go with the tank as well as the regular as the as well as your concentrator and one thing I like to tell all of our patients as well, some people will run out of oxygen tanks and say, hey, you need to come out to our house within the next hour. Please, uh, usually we will do that one time or we'll come out there as soon as possible. But uh, do remind them that we do ask for 24 to 48 hours notice. Um, so we're not causing Tanner to run on a moment's notice when he would like a nice date night with his wife. Uh, we did have one patient call us two Easter's in a row uh, because they had run out of oxygen uh, both times. So do encourage our patients to think ahead of time. And uh, if anyone has any questions, just give us a call, 654-9899.